Welcome everybody, I'm Dave with Family RV. Today we're gonna to be doing a basic walkthrough on a Nortrail 26 DBS. Let's get started. So after you've detached your trailer from your truck, you're gonna see a couple buttons right here at the front by the A-frame. This is a light switch for on, off, and this is how you're gonna adjust the level from front to back with a simply extend or retract. After you've done that, you're going to make sure it's level. You can set a level on the floor inside the coach to get a better leveling idea. After you've checked your level from front to back, after you've detached your trailer, the next step you're going to want to do is deploy your stabilizing jacks. Now, the stabilizing jacks are only stabilizers. They are not jacks to lift the coach up. And where you're going to find those buttons is one's going to be up here. You're going to see an extend and retract. This is on the passenger side in the front. We're going to go ahead and extend this jack down. Now the two front jacks are going to come down together until they hit. One may be a little bit faster than the other. Once they hit the ground, we're just going to make sure they're nice and snug and then we're going to stop. You must hold the button down until they stop. After we deploy the two front stabilizing jacks, we're going to move on to the rear stabilizing jacks, which the button is going to be over here on the passenger side near the rear. Same kind of button, extend and retract, and we're going to deploy these jacks down also and remember one may come down faster than the other that is okay the other one will catch up once the other one goes down a little bit further all right that settles it now this coach is a 50 amp coach which means it's going to look like this but you'll also have an adapter that goes from 50 to 30 in case the campground that you are at only has a 30 we're going to connect it like this and this is with the 30 amp coach now if your campsite is a 50 amp go ahead and use the 50 amp plug and place this in the storage area next we're going to plug in the power shore cord to the travel trailer and this is going to be located at the rear driver's side right here okay we're going to go ahead and lift this up we're going to proceed to stick this in we're going to twist it just a little bit to get it in turn it back like this and then we're going to put these threads on nice and tight and then we're going to go ahead and plug it into the campsite now once you've plugged in at your campsite we're going to ensure that there's maybe a little green light not all coaches have this but also make sure you turn your breakers on at the campsite to ensure you're getting power next we're going to hook up our city water connection to your campsite what we're going to do is we're going to take this end of the hose and the city water connection is located at the rear by the bumper on this model we're going to simply put this end in and tighten it nice and tight all the way the next step after this is we're going to take this end of the hose make sure the water pressure regulator is attached to this side of the hose and we're going to go ahead and attach this to the spigot at the campground now once this is connected to the spigot at the campground you can go ahead and turn the spigot on immediately go inside and make sure all the water faucets are turned off next we're going to be hooking up your black and gray sewer hose as well as a galley hose now this model has two exits in the rear and one exit in the front. The front one is for the galley, which is the kitchen sink, and the rear one is for the bathroom shower and the toilet. Now, your coach is gonna come in with a little container, possibly like this, or your, uh, where your sewer hose will be stored, or it may be in another bag or some other container. You're gonna simply open this, and what we're going to do is we got several connections right here. We have a Y connector, we have an elbow, and we have a red sewer hose. Now we're going to hook up this sewer hose first to the front galley. You're going to notice right here it says gray tank 2. Now we're going to make sure that this valve is closed just like that before you even open up this cap. Make sure you have the proper uh, gloves on before you start uh, handling this. We're going to go ahead and twist this cap off like so it may be a little tight you may have to use two hands we're going to remove that we're going to take this end of the hose and we're going to connect it like this we're going to stretch this hose out now remember if you do have a full hookup campground and you are hooking up your sewer lines like this we're going to uh, make sure that the hole where the lines are going to go in are right in between the coach so we have enough space for those hoses to reach over there now that we've hooked up this gray water we're going to leave this like this for now and we're going to go hook up the other hose in the rear okay now we are at the rear we're going to be hooking up our other 
sewer hose to this. You, uh, this coach may, be com may come equipped with two uh, sewer hoses just for the length. It may or may not. It may only have two small ones. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to make sure these two valves are closed before we open up this cap. We're going to twist this off. We're going to hook up this end again. Lock it in like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move this stuff out of the way. And we're going to stretch this hose just like this. This way. Now since we have two exits, one in the front and one in the rear, your campsite will only come with one sewer inlet to dispose of the waste. Now what that means is we're going to have to connect these two hoses together to go into one exit. And how we're going to do that is this coach, if it has two exits like that, is going to come equipped with a Y connector. This is a Y connector. We're going to simply take the elbow. We're going to connect it to the Y and we're going to lock this in nice and tight like so and this will swivel around. Now this is going to go in the hole at the exit at the campsite. Now we're going to stretch our sewer hoses like so and tighten it right, lock it in right there nice and tight. Then we're going to take the other one. And we're going to stretch this out like so. And we're going to lock that in like so. Put this in the exit. Now your sewer lines and your galley line are hooked up together and can exit through one hole. Now once we've hooked this, these sewer hoses up, we are going to leave the valves closed. We do not want them opening. We only want them open once your tank levels reach to two thirds or full. These are gravity fed tanks. We want them to fill up first. Once they're full, you pull the valves to exit out, pressure and will push everything out. All right. So now that we've leveled our travel trailer front to back, we deployed our stabilizing jacks in the front and the rear, and we've hooked up our sewer electrical and water. We're gonna move inside now and we'll start moving on some functions. At the entry door, you're gonna see a handle like this. You're going to simply gently push the handle up if it's closed and turn it just like that. Next, we're going to use the purple key to unlock the entry door. Now, this purple key is going to be used for both locks. One's a deadbolt and one's the handle lock. The purple key will unlock both of these on the handle. We're going to simply open this guy up and we're going to push this door all the way like this. And the reason why we're going to do that is because these steps are going to come down and we don't want it to damage the screen. We're going to simply get this blue tab right here. We're going to pull it towards us, grab the handle and slowly pull down the steps like so. Now, if the steps are not level like this and it's up a little high like this, you can adjust the feet with this little lever right here. Simply push that in like so and you'll be able to adjust the feet on both sides if they need to be adjusted. Simply put this down. Now we're gonna make our entryway in and we're gonna open up the slide. All right, we're gonna open up the slide, but first we're gonna turn on some lights. Right here on this coach, there's a couple switches on and off, and there's your light switch. We're gonna come on here and here a little bit and we're gonna take a look at some of the slide buttons right here. Not, ev not, not every coach slide buttons are in the same position. They may be on the different wall or something like that. This one is located near the TV on the wall right here, and you're gonna see a button that says slide room in and out. What we're gonna simply do is we're gonna hold down the arrow where it says out, and we're gonna open up the slide and wait for it to stop by itself. All right, that's the slide out. That is, that is it. Next, we're gonna move on to the control panel uh, for all your tank levels. This specific model, your tank levels and your LP water heater, your water pump and your electric water heater is located inside the bathroom. Now how this works is you're gonna see a button that says BAT, -T. that is your battery level just for the coach. Now if you're plugged in, it's gonna always read full. If you're dry camping, it's gonna tell you if it's depleting or not. Simply push that button and all four lights, red lights will light up. 
meaning that your battery level right now is at 100%. That is the battery condition, okay? Your fresh water level is going to read full. So it says tank levels is on the top, empty, one-third, two-third, full. All four red lights indicate that this fresh tank is full. Next is going to be your black tank, which is your toilet waste. I'm going to push this black button, and it's telling us that our black tank right now is empty. See how that works? Next is going to be your gray tank, which is going to be for your shower. We're going to go ahead and push that button, and that's also telling us that our gray tank is also empty. Now, the galley is the tank for the kitchen sink. That's a separate tank. That's why we had to put that Y connected to. We're going to go ahead and push that, and it's telling us that that tank is also empty. Now, if any of these three tanks would get full, one-third, two-thirds, that light will light up and indicate if you're almost to full and when you're getting ready to dump. Now, I always recommend that uh, you wait for the tank to get about two-thirds or full to dump it. That way, that pressure pushes everything out. The more pressure, the better. But stop using the toilet or any of the other two tanks as soon as it reaches full. Now, right below these tank levels, you're going to have three buttons. Once again, LP water heater, water pump, and electric water heater. These two control the water heater on whichever uh, source you want to use. If you are plugged in at a campsite, you're going to mostly likely want to use your electric water heater, and that's going to help save your propane. Okay. However, it is okay if you want to use your LP water heater on propane at, when you're plugged in. That's totally normal. Only use one or the other though, okay? Now this is mainly used for dry camping, the LP water heater. So if you're dry camping and you're using your LP water heater and you are not hooked up to city water, you need to turn the water pump on. The water pump will only be used if you are not connected to city water. If you are connected to city water, this water pump will remain off. You do not need it. Now, in, to make sure that anytime you're using the electric water heater or the propane side, whichever you're using, give it about 20 to 30 minutes. It's a six gallon tank, so be aware of that. The longer the showers, the faster the, the water tank's gonna drain and the less hot water you're gonna have, if that makes sense. Inside your shower, on the shower nozzle, you do have an on and off button to help conserve your water so your tanks are not filling up so fast and also so your hot water is not depleting so fast. It's kind of like a military style shower. You're going to want to hit the, uh, turn the water on, rinse off, hit the button to stop the water, lather up, rinse off, and that's going to help ensure that everybody gets a nice hot shower. So here's a demonstration. We're going to turn the water on and the water is running. We're going to hit this lever right here to turn the water off. Now that just helps save filling up your tank so fast if you're dry camping and it helps ensure that you, you have enough hot water for the whole shower. Go ahead and turn it back off when you're done. Always remember that it's always good practice when you're not using any of these functions and you're traveling, make sure that all these are turned off. Next, we're gonna move on on how to operate the uh, stove top. Now, uh, the stove top may be equipped with the glass top. If it is equipped with the glass top, you're gonna make sure that this glass top is always up. It's gonna act like a little as a backsplash. Do not turn on the burners with the glass down. It will shatter the glass. Once you do that, you can go ahead and see the dial right here. There's a little notch that says off to light each individual stovetop. It's just kind of like at home. What you're going to do is you're going to want to turn this to light and the red light will turn on, turn on light and light. Now you can do them individually. Now, once you do that, you're going to make sure that you ignite this and turn the ignition count, uh, turn it clockwise. Okay. Now it's not going to ignite right now because we have the propane turned off, but if the propane was turned off, it will light every burner. Uh, same with the oven down here. Uh, some of the ovens, you, the igniter may work or it may, you may have to light it with the pilot underneath here. You're going to have to uh, check to see what model that you're in to light the oven. You're going to go ahead and same thing. You're going to turn this to pilot. You're going to push it in like so, so the uh, propane can come out and then you'll light it safely underneath there. Once it's lit, you can turn it to whatever temperature you desire. Now, once you turn it off, the pilot light will go off. Now, remember, once you are done using the cooktop, leave this glass stove uh, glass up. Do not put it down until the stove cools down because it can still shatter. 
Once it's cooled down, you can go ahead and close this and you're good to go. Above the uh, uh, stove, you're going to have a light switch and a fan switch right here. Right above the uh, stove and the stove top, you're going to have your microwave right here. And we're going to move on next. We're going to move on over here to the uh, air conditioner control and the furnace control. It's going to look like a square like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just tap the mode button. There's only three buttons on here, mode button and the two arrows. We're going to gently, you don't have to push it in, slide it like that. It's going to say off. And then we're going to keep hitting the mode button until we get to the setting. Now, if you're running the air conditioner, you're going to always want to have it on auto. If you put it on fan, only the fan will work. It, see how it says, uh, it's a fan high, fan low. If you have it on fan high or fan low, it's only blowing air. It's not going to be blowing cold air. In order to have the AC running, you want to have it on auto. You can adjust the temperature slightly like this. This is already turned all the way down. So you just gently rub it like that and it'll go down. Now, if you want the furnace on, you're going to go ahead and lightly tap it and we're going to go to furnace. Now the air conditioner is still running. We're going to give it a second and it's going to turn back off and then the furnace will kick on just like so. Same thing, just like your home, you can adjust the temperature right here. Now, once you start traveling again, make sure when it's not in use to go ahead and turn it off. All right, next we're going to talk about the refrigerator and the freezer. We're going to open up the freezer door and you're going to notice that there are two buttons here. One is an on and off button and the other one will say gas and check. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is you should always have this on auto and to leave it on auto, you push this button until the auto light lights up. What the auto button in, uh, indicates is that the refrigerator is running on auto, which means if you plug into a campsite, it's going to automatically switch over to electric. If you unplug your electric sh uh, short cord, it's going to automatically switch over to gas, which is propane. Now, if you just want it on gas for some reason, all you have to do is turn the auto light off by pushing the gas button, and that'll completely run the refrigerator just on propane but usually I like to leave it on auto so I don't have to worry about doing any of that. Now, uh, make sure that when you do pack your refrigerator that you are not blocking these fins or have anything that can get frozen. Blocking these right here will stop the circulation of the cold air going around and it may not function properly. Always make sure that this wire right here is attached to the fins to this clip like this okay if it's not it's real simple all you do is take this off put this back on if it does fall off for some reason and stick it right back in the fins like so all right in this north trail model we are in the main bedroom and i just want to show you how to unlatch this door because right now it's locked uh, behind the door over here is just a simple latch that you lift up like this and this bedroom door will slide closed now remember to always latch this door back before you start transporting because this door will start slamming back and forth if that is not latched. And also while we're in the bedroom, you can take a look above the bed, which is a king size bed. You got multiple different storage compartments and little small closet space as well as some blinds that simply go up and down with ease like so. Up and down on all the blinds. You got some power cords right there. Now the outlets on any coach will only work if you are plugged into shore power. The USB ports will work on regular battery, so you don't need to be plugged in for the USB, but you do need to be plugged in for any of the outlets to work. You also need to be plugged into shore power for your microwave, your air conditioner, and your TV. You need to be hooked up to shore power for all those components to work. All right, next we're going to come back into the restroom, and we're going to show you a few things in here. Now, you do have an outlet, an electrical outlet right here, which is a GFI protected. So let's say you're plugged into your shower power and you plug something in, but you plug it, you plug it into your outlet. It's not working. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come check to see if your GFI breaker is, is tripped right there. Okay. And then we'll move on. If that's not, we'll move on to the um, breakers and fuses, which we're going to get to in a little bit. Next is just your, um, your sink for your bathroom. We're going to turn the water pump on. So this is one thing that you're going to want to make sure is turned off before you hook up your city water connection or turn on your water pump. Always make sure that these faucets are closed and always make sure that this drain plug is not plugged where it can fill up water and accidentally spill over. 
Next is the toilet right here. We're going to go ahead and lift this. And you're going to notice that there's a foot pedal right here. All you got to do is you're going to hold that down and you're going to flush. Now, uh, some toilets have a half step <clears throat> where you can half step the step and it fills the toilet up with water just like a regular toilet. And when you're done, you can go ahead and flush it down. Always remember to use RV marine toilet paper when you're using a travel trailer or a motorhome to ensure that your tanks are not getting clogged and everything gets cleaned out properly. Right above your toilet, you're going to have a vent. Now come on over here. We're going to take a look at this vent on how to open it. We're going to pull this handle gently. We're not going to pull too hard, just gently. And we're going to open up the vent. And right over here is your fan switch. We're going to go ahead and hit that. And we're going to make sure that all air gets out. Now, when you are traveling, make sure this fan is turned off. And when you are traveling, always make sure your vent covers are closed to ensure they don't get damaged. Next, we're going to move over here to the shower. We've already uh, told you how to turn this on and off with the handle. Now, the shower door, we're going to go ahead. It's just a little film. We're going to go ahead and it's going to lock in like so. Be very gentle with this film right here while hitting your elbow or taking a shower because it can damage it. Now, as I talked about earlier with the GFI and the other breakers, these breakers in this specific North Trail model are going to be located right below the fireplace. And we'll talk about that right now. You're going to simply push that door open like that. And you're going to locate all your breakers and all your fuses that are right here. Now, normally, if a fuse goes out, a red light will light up. And that is not the case for every um, fuse box. Uh, if something does not functioning, this is one of the first things you're going to want to check to make sure none of these breakers trip. Now, breakers can trip if your electrical uh, power grid at your campsite is not functioning properly. So be aware of that. It's not always the coach. It could be the campground. And also campground uh, electrical camp pops of these sometimes when they're not properly installed at the campground. Uh, right above that, we're going to have the furnace. Now this is a, an electric furnace. Okay, so there's a button right here. We're going to go ahead and turn it on. Now you can just use it for ambience or you can use it to uh, heat up whatever you want. And right on here, you'll see some controls on how the temperature. Uh, it'll say right there, L1, uh, F1, F2, and uh, in the owner's manual you will you'll be able to read on what those functions are right above that fireplace electric fireplace we're going to have the radio <clears throat> simple radio just like any other radio in a vehicle or at your home you'll have a zone one and two we're going to power this guy on zone one may be for inside let's see zone one is for outside and zone two is for inside so depending on where you want the music going and then you can just bluetooth just like a regular bluetooth on any other device uh, the TV is going to be located right above that. And this TV is a normal TV. It is not a smart TV. It does not have Wi-Fi. It does not have any that. It does have some HDMI plugs. All right. In the North Trail 26 DBS, we do have a bunkhouse. Right up in the bunkhouse, we're going to turn this light on. <clears throat> we're going to talk about this bunkhouse a little bit. We're going to take a look at the top bunk, which is going to have a light switch right over here. You just simply hit the light switch. If you needed more headspace for the bottom bunk, you can go ahead and lift this up and you can lock it into place right here or over there. Same with the bottom bunk, same light switch over there. Go ahead and you can lift this up and you have storage underneath this guy right here that you can store a lot of stuff. You can also lock it in. Now this room, this bunk room, also has a door. Now to operate this door, right now it's gonna, we're gonna build a wall, it's all together. We're going to unlatch this <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to unlatch that and what it's going to do is it's going to open up this door unlatch that but we're going to have to come on over here real quick once we unlatch that there is a latch behind here so i'm going to get that in there right here we're going to pull that down and this whole thing is going to move now what we're going to do is we're going to come back Swing it this way, and now we're going to latch it in right there and turn it. Now we have just locked in the wall. Now this whole bunk room ha has all the privacy that it needs. Come on out over here, and we'll show you what it looks like out here. There you go. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it down. We're going to, when you're traveling, you're going to want to put it back into the lock position closed. So what we're going to do is we're going to unlock this wall again, pull it down, swivel it back this way, 
lock it in up to the ceiling like so. Now that wall is locked in. And now we're going to make sure that we latch the door with this strap again right here. Make sure that's strapped in before transporting. All right, in the dinette area, we do have a light switch for the dinette light. And this dinette also turns into a bed. What you're going to do is this wooden tabletop is going to detach from the metal legs right here. You're going to gently pull it up just like so. One leg may be attached. All we're going to do is gently take this off, set it right there. We're going to wiggle this around. Take that off right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide this tabletop gently like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the cushions. This cushion. And you can use these small ones right here, however you prefer, whichever, which configuration is going to fit best to make a bed. Now, when you're putting it back together, simply push the cushions back in reverse everything's going to go in reverse mode now we're going to gently take this off set it down like so put the post back in the holders like so and we're going to line them up and we're going to make sure it's secured back on in this specific coach of the north trail you have at the entry door you do have a nice size pantry pretty decent size and with the light switch up there and then right over here, always look inside the coaches for any kind of QR codes that may be useful to you. A lot of these coaches have the QR code. This one has a QR code for the owner's manual. If you don't see the owner's manual in any of the cabinets, always try to look for one of these and read the labels. Next, we're going to pull out the awning. Make sure you are clear of any trees before you pull out the awning. Make sure it is not windy and make sure it's not pouring down rain because it can damage the awning. Next, <clears throat> next to the slide out button, you're going to see the awning button. Same concept, in and out. You're going to hold the button down until the awning fully extends when the flap comes down. All right, this is the awning fully extended. Once you see that flap come down, that's as far as it's going to go. Now, if you don't see the flap come down, you're going to make sure that you just want to stop at the metal cylinder. Sometimes that flap gets stuck from moisture. Uh, other than that, you're good to go. Uh, make sure you do not leave the awning out unattended. If you do leave the uh, area, a gust of wind may come, rain or whatnot. Always make sure that you are just aware of the weather conditions for the awning. To close it back up, all you're going to do is simply put push in the awning in button and hold it down until the awning completely closes by itself. Right, after we've closed in your awning, we're going to start breaking down. Make sure everything is closed properly. All the lights are turned off. All the components are turned off. Awning is pulled all the way in. And we're going to make sure the slide is pulled all the way in. After we've pulled the slide in all the way and turned off all the lights, getting ready to depart, we're going to go ahead and go turn off all the lights, go outside. Now that we closed up everything inside, make sure everything was turned off. Slide is closed. We're going to do everything in reverse mode. We're going to go ahead and lift up these stairs like so. Make sure it is properly latched right there. We're going to go ahead and close this door. Make sure it is locked with the purple key. And we're going to close that right there. Now, you're going to see several keys on here. The purple one is for the entry locks. And the other one may be for the storage compartment locks on the exterior. Now, once we've uh, closed up the side, like I said, and everything is turned off, we're going to come back over here. Make sure that you've turned the water spigot off to release the pressure for the hose. We're going to go ahead and detach your water hose like so. And we're going to put it in the proper storage, in the storage compartment in the front of the travel trailer. Next, we're going to go ahead and detach our shore cord like so. We're going to remove it like that. Put that down. We're going to roll it up. We're also going to detach it from the power line at the campsite and store it in the proper storage compartment over here. Make sure if you do have an adapter on your 50 amp plug that you do not forget that adapter. Always make sure all the adapters are equipped with it. Next, we're going to come on over here and we're going to uh, disassemble our sewer lines and our galley and gray tank lines. 
We're gonna always make sure that we have some gloves on to ensure that we're not getting messy or any kind of contamination. What we're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that your valves are closed. Push them in. Don't assume that they're closed. Don't assume they look closed. Make sure you push them in before you detach the hose. Now, I'm gonna remove that and we're gonna immediately cap it on. And we're gonna come over here to the other one. We're gonna remove that and we're gonna immediately, we close that, cap it on, and then we're gonna store the sewer hoses in the proper containers. Also remember that when you do dump your black and your gray tanks, make sure you pull your black valve first. Then you pull your gray. The gray helps flush out the hose after the black water's in there. Now, before you start moving the front jack to hook it up to your truck, you always must remember to retract your stabilizing jacks. These have to go up. Do not make any movement to the front jack until these jacks are up all the way. All right, that's all the way up. We're gonna come to the rear over here, hit the retract button and retract the rear sta power stabilizing jacks. Once your rear stabilizing jacks are up, then you can proceed to push the travel trailer up to hook it up to your ball and hook up the safety chains uh, to uh, the truck to, for proper safety. Now, one thing I wanna mention is you're gonna notice in the front, there is a plastic container right here. These are two propane tanks, okay? Now, both of these tanks will be full and to turn them on, you're gonna simply open up the valves like so. Now, uh, this arrow is gonna be pointing to this tank, which means if you're using propane, it is feeding from this propane tank. If this propane tank goes empty, you're gonna simply get this lever and point it to the other propane tank and open up the valve right here, and then that gives you enough propane to go fill this one right here. Uh, make sure all this is all tightened. If you do take these off, Make sure they are back in order and properly secure before you start traveling. Thank you everybody for watching our basic walkthrough with the North Trail 26 DBS. We hope this video was very helpful for you. If you have any other questions, please give us a call at 408-612-4700 or check out our website at www.familyrv.com. Take care.